going to get into the word this morning. I want to talk to you about the goodness of God and what he has for us today. As you heard, if you didn't know, you heard Pastor Lauren, you see it on the screen behind me. We just had 40 hours of prayer, 40 hours of consecration. Some of you might think like, how in the world can you do that, right? Truth is, it wasn't one person for 40 hours straight. People were coming and going. Some crazy people were here the entire 40, right? But the heart, the posture, whether we were here or not online, you tuned in today because God is drawing you in. And the posture in prayer is us saying, God, I desire you in my life and I desire you to move on this earth. God, I have a desire, Jesus, to know you. Jesus, I have a desire for you. And one thing we learned this week, this weekend, is that we want our capacity. We want our ability to make room to equal our desire. So that we're not just asking, but that God can respond that there is space, that there is time, that there is the, that the openness to not just ask for something, but to pause and to make room. And God is faithful. He showed up these last 40 hours. If you can turn to John 17, verse 20, this morning, I'm going to talk about united for glory. United for glory this morning. And in John 17, Jesus is in the garden before he's going to the cross. Right? Jesus is in the garden and he's praying for his disciples. And then in verse 20, he shifts and starts to pray for all believers that will come through his disciples and through his ministry. And what I love about, is Jesus didn't, this is how I need you to, to frame this scripture, to frame this prayer, and to think about who and what Jesus is and doing over our lives. He didn't just pray over us 2,000 years ago. In Romans 8, it said that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. That means for 2,000 years, Jesus is still praying over us, is still speaking over us. Today, he sees your heart. He knows Whatever you're going through, he knows your desires. And he's speaking over you. He's speaking over your marriage. He's speaking over your singleness. He's speaking over your schoolwork, your studies. He's speaking over your jobs, your children, your finances. He's speaking over your anxiety. He's speaking over your joys and your hopes and your desires. And he's saying, make room. Slow down. Stop talking for just one second and allow me to minister to you. Can we have that type of heart posture? Yes or no? At home, can you have that type of heart posture? I'm taking it that online you're, you're hitting up, right, the chat and you're saying yes, yes, yes. So right now, let's take 30 seconds Close your eyes.
and talk to Jesus. And do your best in the ways that only you can do to make room, to pause, and to open your hearts up this morning. We thank you, Jesus. This year, we are double downing on prayer. We are believing that this house and everybody in it is going to mature and grow in their prayer life, in their ability, in their effectiveness and communicating, and talking to God, even beyond that of becoming and following in the foots of Jesus to be an intercessor and to pray for the things God wants us to pray for and to be able to hear from him and to pray those very things. For some of us, you might say, man, I don't know what you're talking about. It's baby steps. It's not a problem. And the reason I share that is because prayer is crucial. Prayer is the heart of our relationship with God. We had Pastor Sam from New York City, from Church of the City in New York here with us last night with a team of about 15 people. And he shared something. He shared this this quote, I'm not sure if he was quoting somebody else, but he said, I'm paraphrasing, that the devil, the devil only cares about stopping your prayers. He doesn't care about anything else. If he can stop us from praying, we are defeated. If he can stop us from praying, the church becomes impotent. If he can stop us from praying, our faith starts to dwindle. If he can stop us from praying, we become disconnected from God and from one another. The importance of prayer means everything. So here is Jesus praying for us. John 17, verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone. He's talking about, it's not for the disciples alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. So Jesus is saying he's praying for you. No matter who you are, no matter what you believe, what you think, whether you think church is a something your parents do, he's saying Jesus prays for you. That all of them may be one. That everyone may be one. Father, just as you are in me, I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Jesus starts this prayer with a prayer for unity, a prayer for oneness. And he says the same way, he says, God, the same way that you are one with me, that I am one with you. Jesus says earlier, I have done everything I have heard you say. Everything I did is because you told me to do. Jesus was step by step. You ever see synchronized swimming? You ever see that? Isn't it like the most amazing thing? 
These women are in the pool and they're just doing everything exactly the same. Jesus is like, that's me and God. God pops his leg up. Jesus is right there going down, <laughs> spinning. They're one. In Jesus' prayer for you, this is what he believes for you. Is that you can do the same. Can you imagine being synchronized with the Father in such a way? As he moves, we move. As he steps, I step. As he pauses, I pause. That is the prayer of Jesus. And even further than that, he says that this is the key to the world seeing him, the world knowing him. Like, wait, wait. Jesus, you're not going to just jump in the pool and have these just open exhibits for everybody to see you synchronized with the Father so that others would be like, yo, I want to do that too, and then jump in the water with you? You're saying that in order for the world to know I have to get in the water and I have to do it with you? There is no synchronized swimming with just one person. We tried it when we were little. We used to do those flips in the water, splashing everywhere, hot mess, water up our nose. No, no, no. In tune, in step with the Father. And this is God's strategy to let the world see him, to let the world know him, to experience his love. He's saying now through the church, now through the church, I will make myself known. Unity is powerful. Oneness. But what is this oneness Jesus is referring to? Is he saying that, Trevor, you and I have to agree on everything? We need to just, no matter what it is, you're like, no, I can't, -uh, I would never wear those shoes, Pastor Marco. No, we're not, we can't agree. That's not, you want to know what the agreement is? Do you not know what the unity is? You want to know what the oneness is? In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. My thoughts don't matter. My ways, I put them to the side. We, our agreement is that Jesus is who he is. That he is the living God. That he is the word. He was in the beginning and he will be at the end and he is here in the middle, in our midst among us. Our agreement is in the promises and the word and the truth that he spoke that is Christ Jesus. When we come into agreement, what does the word say? When two or more do what? Come together, come in agreement, in what? In his name. We have to agree in his name, not in our agendas or our worldviews. And then in verse 22, it's the sharing of glory. It says, Jesus says, I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me 
and have loved them even as you have loved me. What is glory? This is a term we hear a lot in the church. And there's a few different ways it is used within the Bible, from Old Testament to New Testament. The simple understanding I want to bring to you this morning is when you hear Jesus talk about glory, he's talking about the tangible, real, manifest presence of God on the earth. It is heaven on earth to where it activates our senses. You come into the room and you feel it. You can see it. You can hear it. You can even touch it. The manifest presence of God. In the Old Testament, we've seen these through outside objects we saw it through right a fire at night a pillar during the day we saw it as a burning bush the manifest presence of god but in the new testament what happened in acts when they came together in that upper room when they prayed when they came into one accord in jesus name what happened that manifest presence dropped. But it didn't drop like the glory above the ark in the tabernacle. It dropped into every single person's bodies, into their lives. And that oneness, the power of that oneness that manifested the presence of God that manifested the glory was then able to be seen by thousands of people and they came to believe. Jesus' prayer in chapter 17 came to be in Acts 2. It's incredible. If you've never read it, Read it at home. Read Acts 2 and what happens when God's, when Jesus' prayer, when his promise, what he spoke comes to be. And what he did then, he is doing today. He is doing now. To have the sobering thought Jesus says, God, the way that I am in you and you are in me is what I want my church to be with you. The way that in John 1 verse 14 where it talks about the word became flesh and the glory was on the earth the way that Jesus was the glory, the manifestation of God, the ultimate manifestation of the glory of God, right? We sing glory in the highest when Jesus was born during Christmas time because the manifestation of God himself was birthed onto the earth. What Jesus is praying right here, he's saying, the same way that I manifested your glory on this earth, I pray that they will also. What? What? And here's the, he's not setting us up to fail. He's not putting an impossible task in front of us. He's not saying, yo, I'm Usain Bolt, and I'm about to run this 100. Get next to me. And when you hear the gun go off, you need to stay in stride, every single stride with me. How many of you know, like you'd be like, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Pow! You'd be, you don't even take a step 
He's already finished. That isn't the way God is setting us up here. Because he is. If, if the manifest presence was running, he is the Usain Bolt. And we are that kid in high school that couldn't even do that 10-minute mile. Like, <sighs> but God is saying, my spirit, that I'm going to pour out on all flesh, on my sons and daughters, for those that believe it through Christ, Christ Jesus, through my son. Because Jesus says in this prayer, God, through me, they can be, not on their own, but through me. That changes our prayer life. It changes our perspective of life. It changes the way we engage in culture. It changes the way I love my wife and I raise my children. If Jesus, who was perfect, who was without sin, who was the very son of God, says he did not make one decision without consulting the Father, and he only did then what he said, who am I? Who are you? That we were not like, okay, Father. That's why making room, that's why prayer is so essential. That's why not just having the desire for prayer and even praying up a storm, every prayer meeting at home, praying and praying, sometimes just going in circles. Like the Israelites through the wilderness for 40 years Where's the promised land? Where's your promises, God? Where's your promises, God? Where's your promises, God? God's saying, like Pastor Sam said, make room. Make sure you have capacity. Don't be like one. How many of you have like an old iPhone 6? And people are like, yo, you have to download this. And you're like, uh. All right, I'll try to delete some photos. And then you go to download, and it's like, it's not downloading. It's not downloading. And you're getting frustrated and mad. How many of you start blaming the phone? Break it. That would be silly. Truth is, that phone doesn't have the capacity for the download that's required to house that app. We need the capacity to house what God wants to download in us. And he is gracious. He is amazing. He goes glory to glory, meaning his manifest presence goes from one season to another season to another season. Because what he does is he creates some capacity in us and he downloads it. And then we take another step. We move, we grow, we mature and then he says, okay, it's time to upgrade your system so that you can take the next download. Sometimes you have the capacity, but you're not upgrading the system. You're not aligning yourself to what God is speaking and saying now. And then it's saying, no, but if you just upload the system, refresh, recalibrate it, God's saying, now I'm bringing you to the next season. And I'm pouring out a new glory in you and that's how maturity that's how we grow that's why we see even in the book of acts they didn't get filled by the holy spirit right there in acts chapter two and it's like okay it was done acts chapter four and five acts 16 they get together they pray and the holy spirit fills them the holy spirit fills them over and over and over again why more capacity equals more of his presence in my life. Let's move on here. 
was we're going to come to the table of the Lord. John 17, verse 24. The desire for the presence and witness. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am. <laughs> Jesus is saying, Father, if, if Marco's a Christian, I don't want him over there doing. If he believes in me, I don't want him over there doing his own thing. I don't want him to be alone. I don't want him praying by himself. I don't want him separated. I don't want him to be an island amongst himself. I don't want him to try to figure out on his own. Jesus says, I want him to be where I am. He's saying, I want you to be where I am. And to see my glory, the glory you have given me, because you love me before the creation of the world. God wants to pour out his glory in our lives. Listen, this is just the beginning. So this is no shame. Like, like Pastor Lauren said, whether it's today, whether it's when we go into other things as we come together and provide more and more opportunities to gather, just like they did in the book of Acts. They didn't just gather and pray one time. They consistently did it week in, week out, week in, week out. As we do that, you're going to have more time and more ability. But that is what we did for over 40 hours. We say, God, we're going to stand on your word and we're going to pray. And we're going to try to have our capacity open up in a way that it mirrors, that it equals our desire. Because we're tired that, of having our desire far outweigh our capacity. Verse 25 says, Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. God, God's heart is to respond to our prayers. He wants to respond to our prayers. He wants us to know that he loves us and he cares for us that he can fill us and transform us. But will we take that time? God's love transforms everything. For us today, it's an invitation. It's an invitation to be unified in glory. To come into agreement and say, God, we as a church, we agree that we want your real presence to invade this house to invade this place, to invade our church, to invade online, to invade our homes, to invade my situations, my heart, my prayer room, my time reading the word. Jesus believes so much. Do you believe? 
Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I struggle. Sometimes it's just so much easier to put on ESPN. That's me. So much, it's just so much easier. There's so much stuff going on. And you get weary. But if Jesus doesn't stop praying, who are we to stop? So, Lord God, we come. Pastor Jason, if you would come up. If you need. Oh, he's there. This, how long have you been there for? Should have started playing when you got up there. If you need an offering, I mean an offering envelope. If you need an offering envelope, we're going to give you are the, what is it called? The elements. I'm like, I'm like, I'm in, I'm in that place, you know. It's amazing. So, if you need an element, raise your hand at home. If you've never done this before, take a step. Go to your kitchen, grab some bread. You can grab a cracker, okay? Grab water, juice, milk, wine, whatever it is, and come back in front of your screen, wherever you are. Because Jesus is inviting us. The table is a place of oneness. It's a place of agreement. It's a place of invitation. It's a holy. Back then especially, they didn't just invite anybody to the table. When they invited you over their house, they invited you in as family. You literally could afterwards sleep over and make that home your home. It was an invitation to be a part of their family. That's why when Jesus comes to the table, he's saying, I want you to be one with me. It's around the table that he shares John 15, where it says, I am the vine and you are the branch. Abide in me and you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. You're like a branch that falls off, that just you pick up off the ground, that withers away, that you throw into the fire. But Jesus says, man, if you are connected to me, you have life. You bear so much fruit. And the world will see it. Lord God, we come to your table. Over these next couple of months, we're going to provide more and more opportunities for you to corporately come together with your brothers and sisters to learn and to grow in prayer and in his presence. So I'm going to share this before I go. On the screen, you're going to see a QR code for a prayer course we're going to start on January 31st. Eight-week prayer course. It's going to be right here. While Alpha's going on, we're going to have the prayer course going on at the same time. We're going to be downstairs having fellowship together, breaking bread, and then we're going to come back in here, and we are going to learn and grow in the ways of prayer. But we also want to continue to provide spaces where we can pray together. And we are going to be launching in the days ahead something we're calling prayer rooms. A spaces where you can come at different times of the day to pray with other believers and not just pray out of our feelings or out of our emotions that sometime 
lead us astray and even gets us to pray those prayers that keep us in the wilderness. But we coming together to pray the word of God. That's what we did for 40 hours. We meditated and prayed on the word of God over and over and over again. And it was freeing as God came. Or I should say as we stepped in. So we're going to have prayer rooms. Right now we have one. Tuesday at 6 a.m. You are all invited. Hopefully it's going to be so big we'll have to move it to the youth center. But right now this prayer room on Monday, on Tuesday mornings at 6 a.m. is going to be held down the street across from our offices in the youth center on Naugatuck Avenue, there is a little brick building and the sign says the gathering spot. For those of you who might know, it's the old cancer care space. This gathering spot, 6 a.m. And we also have Monday night prayer where we are going to continue having corporate prayer. We are going to move dynamically, be led by the Holy Spirit, but we're also going to be praying the word there too. We want to invite you out. And here's my next thing. We are praying and believing for 15 to 20 prayer rooms to be going on to start up this year. And I could be, I could be even bold to say this winter, 15 to 20 prayer rooms that are going to be going on morning, lunch, and night, five days a week. I want to invite you in. Some of you, God's going to have you be part of the prayer room leadership team the team that will lead the prayers. If you have that tug on your heart, Pastor Terry, stand up. Where are you? She's right back there. You talk to Pastor Terry. You email her. You call the office. You get a hold of her. You talk to me. We are going in. We are going to create the space and the capacity to meet our desire as we come together in unity, in agreement, so that the glory of God can come. And there's going to be more in store this year. This is just the beginning. But with that, can we come to the table of the Lord right now? And can we make room right now? We're not going to rush to the table. This isn't some ritual that we just do, remembering what Jesus said and did with his disciples 2,000 years ago. This is an invitation to be at his table, to be part of his family, to be one with him as he is one with the Father. This is his invitation to not just be one with him hanging out at his house, but literally he's saying, I want to give you the keys to this kingdom. I want to give you a place of ownership as you come together that you will take this work beyond what I was able to do. You're going to bring it to the four corners of the earth. You're going to bring it into your high schools and your colleges. You know, this year we have, Pastor Brandon, correct me if I'm wrong, University of Bridgeport, University of New Haven, they're going to be doing Alpha. We're going into the prisons, halfway houses. We're going into high schools with it. Our youth ministry even starting up prayer groups in other schools because we're like, no. If it stays here on Sunday, if it's just something we can just click on and click off, God is saying it's time to get uncomfortable. Shake it off and I'm going to meet you in that place and watch what he does with you. Watch what he does with us. I was brought to this moment. I'm going to say this one last thing before we go to the table. When Pastor Sam last night started speaking, and he started speaking about kingdom life, and he started speaking about the things God spoke over this church 
32 years ago that the prophetic words that were spoken then, what God spoke through Bishop and Janine and the leadership and the people that came into this house and his rhema word that came forth and exploded in this place. Some of you were here, you know how it exploded. It was a vision, it was a promise, it was a made that it was like, man, this is God. He started sharing how that word wasn't just for then, but it's for today. Why do I share that? Because God, God never spoke anything that didn't come to fulfillment or that won't come to fulfillment. What he spoke thousands of years ago came to pass. What he spoke in Isaiah came to pass with Jesus Christ. What Jesus spoke is coming to pass today. What was spoken over this house for the first generation is the same word that's being spoken over the second and third and now the fourth and fifth and sixth generations that are to come. God is building on it and building on it. And he's saying, will you come to the table? Will you make room? And in order to sometimes make room, we got to die to something. We got to give something else up. Something has to be sacrificed. So Lord God, we come. We come to you this morning. Some of us are like Thomas coming into the room doubting unsure, not knowing what to think, what to believe. Others are coming like Peter, battling shame and regrets for denying and turning his back on Jesus. Some of us are like some of the other disciples that ran and fell asleep on him. But God today is saying, I still want to pour out my spirit. God is saying, that does not define you. What defines you is who I say you are. So Thomas come, Peter come, disciples come, Believers, come. Stand on my word and believe in one accord in the name of Jesus that every word he has spoken will come to pass. If we could agree, watch what he's going to do in the days ahead. Watch what he's going to do in the days ahead. Watch the gifts that are going to come pouring out of you. The things you only dreamed of, the things you dreamed of when you were a kid that has been lost for decades will come back to life as God says, it was never dead. Make room. So Lord God, we come. We make room right now. We still our hearts and our minds. We open ourselves up. We bring things to the table that we don't want to pick back up. We put down the busyness. We put down all the other things and we pick up your body. that was broken for us on Calvary, that died for us on that cross so that we may have life, 
so that we may be one with the Father once again as it was intended in creation to be in a garden with him one with him male and female he created us all in his image so Lord God we partake and we say yes in Jesus precious name And we thank you for your blood, Jesus, that was shed on that cross when the nails pierced, living waters flowed out, healing waters flowed out for everyone, for all of us. There is no longer shame or condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus God makes all things new. We are not defined by our circumstances. We are not defined by our past decisions. We are not defined by our mistakes, even the grave mistakes that hurt others. The power of forgiveness through the cross brings me back to life in that same power of forgiveness I extend to ones that hurt in me also. So, Lord God, we partake. Worship team, come on up. We're going to pray for the Holy Spirit to come. Online, stay with us. In the building, thank you for coming out in this storm. You didn't just come out to come to Sunday morning service. You came out. Because God is drawing you and wants to do something in your lives. You tuned in because God has more for you. Right now I invite you into worship. Into a time of prayer. Of coming into agreement with everybody in this room and everybody online. And asking for the Holy Spirit to come. And for him to bring us into unity. And may his glory be unified throughout this house. Let's worship. Come close, draw near here, spirit come. You're welcome here. You're welcome here. Come close, draw near, Spirit, come. You're welcome. You're welcome here. Come close. Come close. Draw near. Spirit, come. You're welcome here. You're welcome. thirst for you come do what you do cause all I want is you all I want is you my soul thirst for you come do what you do cause all I want is you all I want is you
presence changes everything, everything, everything. Your presence changes. Your presence changes everything, everything. Your presence changes everything.
Is there anything you want to tell me? I'll hang on every word you say. I'm longing for a fresh encounter. A wonder that I can't explain. Is there anything you want to show me? Your presence is my favorite place I don't want to leave this moment I don't want to miss one thing Is there anything you want to tell me? I'll hang on every word you say I'm longing for a fresh encounter A wonder that I can't explain 
Is there anything you want to show? Your presence is my favorite place. It's my favorite place. Your presence is my favorite place. Oh, it's my favorite place. Thank you. Lord, we thank you in this house. Holy Spirit, we thank you for what you're doing in this room right now, this morning, last night, the day before what you've done in this room for the last 20 years. Holy Spirit, continue to move. May your peace and your love and your grace, may your truth and your word and your righteousness always be welcome. May we always be open. And I thank you for everyone online. If you're still there, man, we thank you and we believe God has called you. God loves you. And no matter where you are, his presence is there with you whenever you make room and you call on the name of Jesus he is faithful and just and will always be with you if you're ever in the Milford area come on and be in the room there's something about the room thank you Jesus 
for our online audience. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. For those of you in the room, we're going to continue worshiping if you want to continue worshiping. I think God has some more.